an article from them talking about Tether planning to open source Bitcoin mining OS. And so I was trying to figure out what this was. So Tether Bitcoin mining OS. So this one is really, really odd. So, um, let's see if we have, so it's all talking about the article that I have right now. Okay. So here's where it started. I believe, and then we'll get to where we're at, right? So, uh, we went back to Coindesk. Um, but let's get a little information. When was this written? This was May 30th. So this is recent too. Um, so Tether expects that the mining facility, so they invested in a mining facility. Does this talk about the mining OS? No, this is just their facility in Paraguay. Um, I want the mining OS details. Because I was trying to fit. So let me tell you what the article's about, right? So USDT issuer is going to be open sourcing their Bitcoin mining OS, uh, which is, uh, I guess short is, Moss, and um, I guess it's going to be Arduino, or, oh no, okay. So they talk about, where is it, Raspberry Pi. So here's the, here here's the, yeah. Let's just read his, his Twitter, and then I'm going to try to dig into this and figure out what it is. So Tether will work towards open sourcing its Bitcoin mining OS. A horde of new Bitcoin mining companies will be able to enter the game and compete with the network uh, to keep the network safe. No need anymore for third-party hosted software. MOS will create an even playing field, reducing the gap uh, between publicly listed companies and smaller players. The mining OS is extremely scalable, resilient, and modular, built with peer-to-peer -peer IoT architecture at its core. It can scale from a Raspberry Pi connected to a bunch of miners to full site development uh, with multiple redundant mainframes monitoring hundreds of thousands of miners. So what I understand is, and what I was trying to look into is I think this is just straight up like a competitor to Foreman or Hive, and it's supposed to be open source, right? So currently, like if you use Foreman or you use Hive, there is like, there are fees attached to those. So for mining firms, you know, that are smaller or hosting facilities, et cetera, um, if they open source this effectively, uh, you can get rid of a lot of the fees and, you know, improve your margins effectively, right? That's what I'm reading it as. The problem is, is I haven't been able to find the actual, any details on their OS in particular, but maybe, uh, maybe you guys can help me find the links to it. So it's supposed to sp support, you know, popular mining machines and vendors in a variety of containers and lots of electrical equipment. And any developer will be able to create custom plugins for other specific equipment and hopefully contribute back to the main code base. The, he also envisions full QVAC tether integration to build better reports and enhance production and performance based on custom AI tools that learn from the huge data sets generated by the mining OS. Also, lots of small mid-sized businesses that produce their electricity and solar will soon start mining with the excess. MOS will make their life easier. So... It does go into like the diversification of Bitcoin miners. Large Bitcoin miners have a significant advantage over smaller players due to their economies of scale, which we've talked about a lot. You know, the days of the home miner are, are kind of going away, unfortunately. But that, I mean, a lot of that has to do with energy costs. And I don't know um, if that's going to come back down. You know, there was a lot of hope uh, in like the surrounding you know, the Trump administration coming back in and bringing those energy costs down. But, you know, I, I haven't seen that play out in reality, unfortunately, yet. And all we continue to see is increases. I know it takes time, so we'll have to see what happens. But as of right now, you know, you aren't going to definitely not even able to like 
get hosted with older equipment and be profitable. Um, some miners have built large Bitcoin treasuries to benefit from benefit from the assets price appreciation during the bull market, while others have repurposed NGUs for artificial intelligence applications. Obviously, for example, Hive Digital are using AI workloads and has generated significantly more income than crypto mining, which has prompted the company to invest more heavily in this area. Uh, institutions are much more interested in us with our AI than Bitcoin, Frank Holmes, Hive's executive chairman, told Cointelegraph in September. Still, some companies have gone all in on Bitcoin, shedding less competitive parts of their operations. Bitcoin miner cargo, for example, generated over $100 million worth of Bitcoin in just two months after selling off its legacy operations to focus solely on its mining business. Um, and then we did see uh, what was the one yesterday? I might have to go back and look it up. Uh, what were they? It was like a weird company. But they completely shifted over to Bitcoin mining at the end of the day, um, which is pretty funny. I'm trying to remember what that was. What company was that now? What did they do again? I'm not going to remember. Go go watch yesterday's stream. Um, so he's saying make mining great again. Do I think an open source OS will make mining great again? N no, because we have an energy cost problem, right? And an access problem. The The fact of the matter is that economies of scale still take over with the reduction in cost based off of the, you know, minimum order quantity price discounts that places like, you know, Bitmain and What's Miner offer, um, making it very difficult for you to really, the great thing about mining was being able to mine from your house and decentralizing the network and being profitable and being able to scale. If you don't, if you haven't already scaled and have a significant amount of capital invested into mining already, it's very difficult to start off with one miner and build up uh, like a lot of us did in the early days, right? So I have a lot of capital invested in mining hardware that allows me to participate with, but and that was all generated through crypto over time and mining crypto. Are those same opportunities available to the whole miner now? I would say not as readily. Um, w without options like obviously like speculative mining kicking off, you know. If you would have speculative mined Caspa, for example, uh, you could have gotten a significant amount of capital to invest in your mining farm, of which you know is what helped me survive and and uh, invest further into my crypto mining operations. Um, so outside of the, some like outlier opportunities like that, which are very hard to one speculative mining, it's very hard to find those opportunities. And then secondary to that, that opportunity requires upfront capital costs in power uh, before those are listed and you can actually recover your energy costs. So that is almost more of a gambling situation, unfortunately, as opposed to what it was like, say, 2016 and 2020 with Ethereum, where you had a pretty... Um, basic assumption of what you could earn with a single GPU say, and then plan that out accordingly to scale. Um, albeit of course the bear markets making that quite a bit more difficult though. Right. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the crypto mining show. If you would like to see more from this particular episode, take a look up here. Don't forget to also subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support me directly, you can go to sonofatech.locals.com and become a member. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next Tuesday.